happy. But that's okay. We'll get, we'll get going with it. So the logically thinking, we found out when we multiply powers, we add those exponents. So what do you think then we would do if we have exponents that, um, with the exponents when we divide these powers? So let's think about it. We know that when we have the same thing on top and bottom, it cancels out. It doesn't really cancel, it becomes one, right? Two over two is equal to one just like heart over heart is equal to one. It doesn't matter what it is. If I have the same thing on top and bottom, if it's a variable, if it's a power, whatever, it's um, always going to be equal to one as long as I have the same thing on top and bottom. So keeping that in mind, we could take this 2 to the 8th over 2 to the 3rd, and just like we wrote them out if we were multiplying, we can write it all out when we're dividing. So on top, I've got 2 times itself. How many times? This isn't 2 times 8. This is 2 times 2, 8 times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, over 2 times 2 times 2. Well, clearly that's 1. That's one. That's one. So I have one times one times one times two times two times two times two times two. So I'm left with two five times. So my answer is two to the fifth. These became one. So over one, which is just two to the fifth power. Okay, so the easy thing to see here is, oh, we just did 2 to the 8 minus 3. We subtracted the lower exponents, and I ended up with 2 to the 5th. There was more in the numerator, so when I'm finished, I should have more in the numerator. All right, so let's try this one. Again, we could write this all out. B times B times B times B times B. One, two, three, four, five times one, two, three, four, five, six, seven C's over two B's and one C. And I see those are all going to become one. So we're left with three B's on top and we are left with six C's on top. And there's nothing in the denominator other than 1. We don't need to write that. So we just write b to the 3rd, c to the 6th. Again, rather than writing all this out, just do the, what it tells me. 5 take away 2 is 3. 7 take away this understood 1 here is 6. And boom, there we go. So you try this one. Take a minute. Give this one a try. Okay, hopefully you realize there's no a's on the bottom. So I just leave the A squared alone. There's nine B's on top, eight B's on the bottom. Eight of those are going to cancel with eight on the top or become one and leave me with just that one on top. My C over C is one. And one of these D's at the top is canceled out with the one on the bottom. So I'm left with D to the third. So my final answer, remember I ended up with all ones in the bottom, is A to the second times b times d to the third. All right, so now let's apply this to some real world problems. And you might read this problem and think, you're crazy, Miss Blevins. I'm never, ever going to do anything like that in my life. But um, I just want to share this little story with you real quick. I have a friend, actually, it's another teacher here in our building, whose son is an engineer, and he just got hired um, for a company that does research for um airplanes and their goal is to build um, prototypes of airplanes that then companies end up buying I guess like the airplane companies buy but what it is they want the airplane to be as lightweight as possible so that it doesn't use up as much fuel but yet it has to be safe right you don't want some airplane that's going to explode once it gets into the atmospheric pressure um, because the material wasn't um, strong enough to endure the whatever, the air pressure. So um, anyway, he was trying to create a product and the math that he was using was amazing. Um, but anyway, I, I just wanted you guys to know that I am sure when he was a freshman in high school sitting in math class and he saw some of this stuff, he was like, mm, yeah, probably never going to use that in my real life. And here he is now an engineer making way better money than the math teacher. 
putting this to use and um, it does have you do have to take into account lots of math this is a real thing that they have to think about when you are flying an airplane you want it to be lightweight you want it to be made of a durable material so that once you get into these different um, layers of the atmosphere where there's all of this intense air pressure um, that you know you don't want the airplane to just crunch under pressure. I don't know all the math behind it. I know how to do the math when it's given to me and then they take it and apply it to their field of study. But I just thought that was really cool. And then when I came across this problem, I'm like, hey, that kind of relates. So I can like put that in my video to let you guys know there is real world stuff out there where you will use math. Maybe you won't be an engineer. Maybe you will. I don't know. If you are an engineer and you're making the big money, you can give your teacher a little kickback someday. Just kidding. Okay, so it says at sea level, there's about 10 to the 25th molecules in a cubic liter of air. In the stratosphere, about 30 kilometers above the Earth's surface, see here we've got most flights go through here, but then when we get up to the stratosphere, we're looking at supersonic flights. So here in the stratosphere, the same cubic liter of air has now about 10 to the 23rd molecules. So approximately how many times as many molecules are there in a cubic liter of air at the sea as there are in the stratosphere? So down here at the sea, it was 10 to the 25th. Up here, it's 10 to the 23rd. So we want to know how many times more is that? So this is just your typical little division problem. We've got 10 to the 25th divided by 10 to the 23rd. We realize that's 10 to the second. 10 to the second is 10 times 10, which we know to be 100. So there are approximately 100 times as many molecules up here in the stratus, or no, at sea level, as there are in the stratosphere. There's not as many molecules in the stratosphere. Okay, so power of a quotient. We have a power raised to a power. Well, we learned in that previous lesson, if we have a power raised to a power, we multiply. Okay, or, you know, this is a division problem. So we could divide first and then raise the power to the power. It doesn't matter which order we do it. So in this case, 1 times 3 is to the third. The second raised to the third becomes a to the sixth, and then the sixth is also being raised to the third power. Okay, so sometimes people are like, hey, let's just go ahead and cancel these out, right? They're both raised to the third. It does not work that way. You have to have the same base. Notice when I was marking things out, I didn't compare A's and B's. I compared B with B, C's with C's has to be the same base. So we can go ahead and simplify this. 5 times 5 times 5. 5 to the third power is 5 times 5 is 25. 25 times 5 is 125, right? So 125 times a to the sixth all over 6 three times. 6 times 6 is 36. 36 times another 6 is 6 times 6 is 36. Carry that 3. So I'm just going to type on the calculator. It's too much thinking right now. So I get 216. So there is my answer. 125a to the 6th over 2 to the 16th. Okay, so let's try it again. This one has variables. So we could go ahead, we'll do it both ways. We'll go ahead and distribute it first. When we have a power raised to a power, we multiply those exponents. So we have y to the second over x to the second, y to the second, z to the second. Okay, so we see this is going to cancel or become 1. 6 take away, or 8 take away 2 is 6, so I'm left with x to the 6th. There's nothing to cancel the z's on the top, so the z's stay in the denominator. And there is my answer. That's one way to do it. We distributed first, then simplified. We could simplify first and then distribute. So we end up with x to the third over z, because one of these cancels with the one on top, leaving me with 3. The z, nothing cancels. The y's cancel. Now raise that to the second power. 3 times 2 is 6. And z to the second is my answer. See, you can see no matter which way you do it, you're going to get the same answer. And I do want to remind you again, the fact that this power is squared. That means that what I have inside of there, x to the fourth times y, x, y, z, 
I have that multiplied by itself twice. So there's also another way that we could write this out and do it. So then we see on top we have how many x's? We've got four. Oops, what, four and four make eight. So we've got x to the eighth. I've got two y's. On the bottom I've got x twice, I've got y twice, and I've got z twice. Those cancel again. Now we can subtract x to the six over z to the second. No matter which way we go about doing the problem, we will get the same answer. All right, I hope this made sense and that you enjoyed this lesson um, and that you are taking the time to watch these videos all the way throughout. Have a great day, guys.